Hello, it's Ross from recordproduction.com. I'm just about to go down to London uh, to Abbey Road Studios, where there's all sorts of exciting stuff going on. A load of producers from recordproduction.com are meeting up to have a look around, check out the new Gatehouse Studio, which is the most affordable studio yet from uh, Abbey Road. And there is a graduation ceremony from um, Abbey Road Institute going on, so lots of young producers and so on. So I'm really excited about that. It's a long trip. I'd better get going. Hey, so this is the recordproduction.com day at Abbey Road. I'm here with uh, Andy Dudman, and we're looking around a setup in uh, Studio 3, talking about beautiful mics, beautiful instruments, and uh, amazing players uh, from the sounds of things. Anyway, so the band is called Rosie T and the Riot Quartet. Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah brilliant. Memory lasted. Um, and where should we start? I mean, where do we start with this? Uh, well, <laughs> set up. I write. I normally write drums at the top of my sheet, but we're right. out here. Okay. Let's go for keyboards. Okay. So we've got the Hammond B3 uh, with a Nord lead stuck on top. Um, nice yep. combination of the two. So I've been what, what are you doing with the Hammond then? How are we how are we making? Uh, first of all, we've got the cable going into the our uh, kind of anti anti booth. Right. So the, the gap between the live room sure. and the and the drum booth. Uh, so the Leslie's in there. Uh -huh. Just a very wide pair on the Leslie. Right, what's on that? Uh, uh, just two 87s, 87s and yeah. then a FET 47 on the low end. We Looks like one nice of my 87s is drooped, so I'll have to raise it up a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> as always. Um, yeah, so yeah. super wide sound on that. And then just a DI out of right. the, the Nord. Right, brilliant. Which always sounds great. <laughs> you feeling it? Yeah. It's it's a nice, nice. Well, we're having a nice, nice kind of colours between the two yeah. instruments. Oh, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. And there's some vocals going on, or are these talk back? Uh, I believe there's some vocals yeah, which we haven't right. haven't heard Brilliant. yet. So Excellent. I need to. That's one. The one thing I need to still check out. <laughs> so a nice little bit of isolation with the SM7Bs. Then that's the aim. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Right. Uh, are we going to use the piano or not? Uh, well, let's talk about it anyway. Don't know. <laughs> Our lovely new Yamaha. Well, a couple of years old now with the MIDI MIDI system in it. Yeah. Um, two M49s, which always sound beautiful on piano, and the off-axis rejection on 49s is amazing. Yeah. So when you've got strings and stuff, other stuff live in the room, works very nicely. And then a good old 44BX. So what's your ethos on the, the piano miking then? It, this looks like it's sort of... Just kind of across. left, right, yep. trying to keep it, you know, fairly wide, okay. but not phasey at all. Um, it's, above the, it's above the, uh, the, above the strings pins, rather, yeah, than, yeah. rather than the hammers. Right. Sometimes okay. I'll, it all depends what, sure. what's going on. Uh, and again, without knowing the mm -hmm. material in advance, that's yeah. always a nice kind of safe place to put your mics. Yeah. And then just as a different colour, having the, the ribbon mic as a mono, just to centralise the image if you want. Yeah. If you want to. We tend to put out, because a lot of the stuff we do here is film work and yeah. you, you never quite know what you're going to be asked for in a mix. Um, we put out a lot of mics, right. and if you've got them out, you don't have to use them. But if you haven't put them out, and you're after something, then you often you might not get the next gig, you know. So, yeah, we, we usually put out too many mics. Absolutely, <laughs> but don't always use them all. And uh, we've got some some back playing. Um, yeah, just a little bit of isolation, keep, as much as you can get. Okay, so bass world. Bass. What's it's happening? Pretty simple. World. Just a DI, and we've got the amp covered over here. Show and tell. Oh right, okay. Fet 47. Oh, there. Yeah, noises. There we are. Uh huh. Uh, just, uh, yeah, Fet 47. Fet 47. Can't beat it, really, can it? Yeah. A bit of a we're, DI we're as well. Super. Are you, are you uh, timer liners, or do you just do you just run the DI at the same time? or? Uh, um, DI at the same time, I and mean, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. You, you don't have yeah. time to fix that before recording that, that kind of stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff can be aligned later. You know, I check, actually, I think I've got the phase switching, because right. you know, I do a yeah. quick, yeah, quick yeah. listen. Yeah. Cool. And check phase. Power supplies there for yeah, piano mics. mics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's in any studio. It's I guess it's always worth talking about monitoring, uh, foldback for uh, for the talent. So um, tell us about how you usually operate that. It's a pretty old school system we've got here. I guess this has been here since the room was designed. Nemesis yeah. foldback. So it's just eight stereos, <coughs> which I'm feeding from the desk, bussing from the desk mm -hmm. in stereo pairs. And then got the talkback mics and the talkback from the desk feeding into the last channel so everyone can hear us. So all the kind of band members have got a headphone yep. mixer. And then the strings, I'm just doing off mono aux on the desk and right. doing that myself. Because they fight over what they want, so I'll just take control of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking of strings, 
let's go and uh, let's go and have a look. The Riot Quartet. All right. Okay. So what have we got here then? Uh, if I if I was doing kind of a bigger string section in, in this room, I'd have mics a bit further away. Mm -hmm. Go around and get a few more different options and colours, but what we don't want to do is get, get too much spill from everything sure. else. So just a nice cardio pair of MK4s uh, for the overall kind of stereo image. And then some nice tight close mics. Teal and 170s on the violins, just yeah. find them really beautiful and smooth. Um, and then a U67 on the viola for body and warmth. Yeah. I'm a viola player. Oh. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and another one of our 47, yeah, uh, U47s on the yeah. cello. Cool, cool. It's sounded great in there. There you go. Yeah, excellent. And, and you know, occasionally, I, particularly with the, the, the 67s, there's, there's a lot that aren't in great condition, and there's a lot of them that you get a little bit of haste on, but that sounded wonderful. Oh, well. <laughs> well yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, I often find, uh, you know, in a lot of studios, the, uh, the 67s can be quite noisy, uh, but they sounded, they sounded super well, urban. I mean, there. Lester, well, Lester you, looks you know after the all the mics, the business, you know, and we've yeah. got. <laughs> Uh, a few years ago when Neumann, I think it was their 75th birthday, they mm -hmm. did a book about the facilities yeah. that had their mics and the guy who came to interview Lester almost had a heart attack when he saw all the spares we've got <laughs> for these mics. So Lester keeps them all in tip-top condition. They're, I mean, obviously valve mics, they're old, they can be temperamental. Um, 67s, we often find that when you fit them for a vocal, hang them upside down. Yes. They're a lot more temperamental than if you have them right. up the right way. Because of the so I was, philosophy about valve valves and, yeah, yeah, who yeah. knows. Um, so I always tend to try and not hang right. them. Right, okay. Cool. Um, but generally they're, yeah, they're, I mean, if there's a noisy mic, it's not in service. Lester takes it and fixes yeah. it, and then puts it back in service. You know? Brilliant, only the best. Right, okay, what's next? Well, I guess we've oh, got this like, empty room. Ah. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, so here's the, uh, Leslie spinning away. So there's a fat 47 down on the uh, on the low. Just for some fatness. Look at these valves here, fantastic. And then you've got just a pair spread across the um, the top spinning horn. Yeah. Sometimes the you know if you've got a, a Hammond player, they might mm. have you know ideas of how wide yeah. they want the sound. Yeah, yeah. I like the, the yeah. full-on width. You can always narrow it again yes. on the, yeah, on the yeah, band absolutely. Pops. absolutely. So that's why I always go full-on wide. Yeah. Cool. 87s, just through 87s, the... 87s, yeah. And, Pop now shield, this is, just, they, just, I've never tried this before. Again, you, know, I, you, yeah. you notice it more if you have them here. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've got your hands there, you've got your feet, you But, you know, the louvers at the side tend to stop a bit of the airflow. I mean, it might be the case that some people watching this video don't know about the Leslie. Should we explain it, maybe, briefly? Um. <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert on Leslie. <laughs> it's a spinning double horn. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it, it kind of throws the sound, sound in different around, directions. Yeah. Like a, Depending like on what sliders three and dimensional the controls on the, yeah. on the actual Hammond itself. Yeah, cool, cool. So, and then drum world. Drum world. Right, squeezed okay. In, squeezed in the little, our now little booth. Are you happy in here? Yeah, it's all right. It's, very, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit blue. It's nice a bit blue. natural light bit though. Bit of that natural light. Yeah, one of the yeah. few, few rooms in this building with some daylight. Cool. So, should we start with the kick and work our way Yeah, out? again, you know, on different projects, I might kind of focus in on just having, like, I've, I've done stuff with just three mic technique, yep. and but this, just cover it all. Yep. We've, you know, not a lot of time to set up and get balances and things. So, yeah, just a B58, mm -hmm. uh, B56, B56 on the kick, and then another FET 47 on the outside. Uh, you get a nice contrast of kind of attack from the shore versus kind of fatness off the off the back head for the with the FET 47. Um, and then on the snare I've got a Bayer 201. Right. Which is I just kind of find the rejection quite nice on those. I mean I, I'm a, constantly changing snare. Is that mics. a jazz funk thing that yeah, you don't feel particularly right just, the rock? Just um it's kind of my snare mic of the moment really. Okay. Um, sometimes again I'll put couple of mics out so you can get different sure. different um, timbres and there's a lot of side stick you might kind of try and hone in on that uh -huh. as well um, and then underneath we've just got a uh, 414 yeah it's actually quite a nice it's one the, it's, it's, it's the, the gold, uh, it's it's the the gold one which they don't make so anymore yeah. um, the TL2 which yes. has got the same capsule as the C12 VR I believe right okay um, yeah I think they're the nicest yes certainly, yeah. certainly of the modern ones yeah 
Uh, just a nice little 84, KM84 on the hi hat. You can mute that in the, uh, in the mix. In the mix. Yep. Push it lots. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Uh, where are we? Toms, 87s yep. again. Yep. You know, sometimes use 421s. Mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a nice distance off there as well. Yeah, not, yep. not too close. Don't yep. want them too. Are you subscribing to the whole kind of movement, you know, keep the, the, the diaphragm as yeah. close to parallel as possible? I try and yeah, try and yeah. keep it. So in, and there's the whole. I mean, Keith Grant used to teach me that. Yeah, big instruments have big capsules, <laughs> and yeah. smaller instruments have smaller capsules, which is a which is a lovely, old, lovely old adage. To, yeah. But um, yeah. So eighty-seven on the other tom. Eighty-seven on the other tom. Yeah. And then. And we've got quite an array here. <laughs> I thought. I thought, why not stick our, our two new red? Well, not red. New. They've been out for a couple of years now. Yeah. Our red forty-seven, mm -hmm. which has the mic amp built into the body oh, of the right. mic, okay. and then you can change. So you've got gain on the actual mic itself, which is right. that lovely big. And do they have a separate pot. power supply? Or uh, are they, they yeah, they're off? separate power supplies down right, the side okay. there, and they come out line level. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, and then there's all sorts of other control. You can you can really kind of yeah. get them quite coloured if oh, you want great. with them. Um, with a couple of switches on the, yeah. on the sides. Um, I've never actually used them on drum overheads before, so I thought right. I'd try them out today. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the, my cool. reasoning for that today. Um, and then this lovely thing, which I'm sure Lester will talk about later, yeah. was 1930-something. It's called the RM1B. Mm -hmm. uh, it was designed by Alan Blumlein. Uh, I mean, Lester knows all this, I think. He'll almost certainly talk about it. Just an old, really old ribbon mic. You can almost smell the history. <laughs> nothing, nothing fancy about it at all. The ribbon is the floppiest ribbon you've ever right. seen on the inside. And there's no top and there's no bottom, <laughs> but it's just a really interesting colour to have. Right. And actually, what I, I've kind of compressed that to tape with quite a fast okay. um, release. Just get a kind of bit of pumping, what, just to get some life. With the, the, the SSL or? Yeah, with, yeah. yeah, just on the SSL. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just give a kind of bit of life to that mic because yep. otherwise it would just sit there being a bit middly. Right. Um, cool. Yeah. And this is, is this the house kit or is it? Uh, kit? It's come Dres from. Dresker. Right. Dres okay. Yeah, so. It's a Sona uh, with Evans heads. So uh, hopefully we'll hear some samples later. And uh, yeah. Cool. And uh, obviously, if, you know, if we're doing the drums in the live room, then we'd mm. have probably a pair of M50s as, as room mics. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Not really space in this booth yeah. for, for any kind of ambience, so. Cool. Right, let's okay. move on. I think, we're, are we done? Uh, just the vocals. Vocals! We can all kind of lurk <laughs> around. Oh, interesting. Um, we did have a 47 out in here, and, and it was working fine, and then it stopped working when everyone came into the room. Wasn't enough time to kind of properly um, work out what was going on with it. So simple option is switch it out for an SM7, which ugh, always sound great on, on vocals. Um, actually, I'm not always the biggest fan of 47s on female vocals. Um, I thought I'd try it today, see what it was going to be like. So I, yeah, I'm not I'm mm -hmm. not distraught that we're not using it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you've brought a pedal board with you. Yes, my TC Helicon. So we just... Uh, Stuck out a. Is that in parallel? So you're getting a dry and a. Uh, well, we stuck out a separate mic. Right, okay, the, cool. Going through that just so, again, so we've got complete control of it. Brilliant. In the, in the room on a separate fader. Uh, same headphone mixes around. Yep. And then just, I like these uh, TV systems. just a little yeah. camera, so, because you're kind of completely around the corner from mm -hmm. where, the, mm -hmm. where the drums are. So it gives a bit of contact with them, um, which is very useful. Awesome. Well, there that, we go. that about finishes it up. We're going to move out of the vocal booth and uh, do some recording. Till I see the space between each breath
be the one that makes you slow down, down. I'll be the one that makes you slow Take off the weight from your tired eyes.